What is up you mortal sacks of leftover meat? Let me run you by a scenario. You are a teen zoomer playing Elden Ring and Grand Theft Auto online on your $3,000 RBG MSG LGBT computer system. Of course, you don't have to imagine, as what is real hardly ever requires to be visualized. But do bear with me for this thought experiment. Have you ever, in your miserable lonely existence as a modern gamer, thought about what came before? How did those filthy boomers of the 2000s pass their time, after their right hand was in need of rest after patting their wife for three hours straight? You have heard of retro gaming before, but it seems too simple, too pure, too basic to be right. There had to be something else. Somewhere to run escape. Run escape. Run escape. Run escape. If you have ever played any kind of fantasy RPG or DD, then you will quickly feel just at home at RuneScape. It's got precisely the enemies, modes of combat, environment, and style that one might expect from any generic medieval fantasy title, and it isn't being gate kept by books worth of background lore. The difference, though, between it and modern games is that there is no real thorough introduction or even main questline. You are just thrown in a village with your dick in your hands and everything from there is up for you to figure out on your own. The whole world is open to you from the very beginning. Well, by the world I mean the surrounding villages, as most of the game is locked behind a paywall. Thankfully, all the achievements in RuneScape are obtainable in free-to-play. The game has a total of 20 of them in the Steam version. The reason I am making this video is to answer the question, are the achievements worth it? Well, watch on and find out. As mentioned before, after finishing Tutorial Island, you are thrown in completely cold in the world of RuneScape. This means that the perfect time to open up the Steam Achievements window and start hunting is right the damn away. Very little content is locked behind having to complete quests. Instead, most of it is locked behind farming levels. More of that later. In fact, about half of the achievements in the game can be collected by fucking around in just a few hours of game time. Some of these include visiting a clothes shop for the first time, hopping into the PvP area for literally a second, checking out a poll booth, dying, and using the home teleport spell that everybody starts with. These are the achievements that you should really not care at all about, as they can be completed any time in the run in less than 5 minutes. In the beginning of the game, I recommend stepping out and fighting some goblins right away to increase your level, as you will be doing that for at least 5 to 10 hours total. Well, not only always the goblins, but you get the point. If you get low on health, kill some cows from the cow farm and burn their meat a couple of times to get some meat to replenish your health. Or just die, the spawn point is really close by and you have 15 minutes to get back before your stuff disappears. I actually recommend really becoming one with the grind early on, so it would feel more bearable later. Combat level 20 is a good first milestone to aim for, which conveniently is also an achievement. I recommend prioritizing melee attack at first, as every 10 levels you get a free weapon from this guide dude, which is really convenient. There are actually three schools of combat in RuneScape, Magic, Ranged and Melee. I recommend Melee, if you've never played RuneScape before, as it is cheap and according to the wiki the most useful against the end boss of free-to-play mode. However, you do what you want girl boss. After having trained for a while, I recommend going to the hole in the barbarian village and navigating the maze there till the end. Be careful, as there are very high level opponents there who you will have to dodge. But if you get to the end, you will get a really nice monetary boost, and an achievement to top it off. When answering the questions it asks, in between rooms, just make sure to not be a complete buffoon and you're fine. Now, as it is a fantasy RPG after all, there are still a few quests that you have to complete to obtain some achievements. My first pro tip for the game is to read through the quests in the wiki beforehand, or at the very least collect everything you will need before starting one. This saves you the time of having to run around the map in a constant search of different items. RuneScape does not hold your hand at all, and most times you are left to figure out yourself where everything is. This is why the wiki will quickly become your best friend while playing the game. I recommend starting with the Prince Ali rescue quest, as it saves you a bit of money in the future by not having to pay for the toll fee anymore. My pro tip number two for your gameplay is to become closely familiar with the Grand Exchange, where you can make requests to buy or sell stuff from other players, often cheaper than what it would cost to buy them from NPCs. Also, the area is constantly packed with other players, so you can always try your hand at begging for items. I for example, got two sets of good armor for free from a friendly helper, meaning I could even sell one for sizable profit. But back to the quests. 
In general, they really aren't anything too special, as they are quite simple in nature. Nonetheless, the quests in RuneScape are incredibly fun and quirky, mainly due to the characters and dialogue, and genuinely much much better than what most modern games offer. When playing, keep in mind that you need to complete a lot more quests to get all achievements than at first seems necessary, as you need 32 quest points to eventually access the final boss. Look at the wiki for information on what quests give the most quest points. For example, the Romeo and Juliet quest gives 5, making it incredibly good for saving time. When you get the chance, make sure to buy a net and start fishing as well. The best spot is south of Lumbridge in the swamp. You will need fishing level 35 for an achievement. That will take a lot of time, I promise you. I recommend catching up on your favorite podcast while you are forced to spend your day fishing. A little help will come from my pro tip number 3. Turn on the option to drop items from the inventory by holding shift. This will make your life a lot easier and I do wish I knew it from the beginning. After 10 to 15 hours of playing, you will probably have all achievements but two, those being Fisherman's Friend and Mighty Slayer. This also brings me to my biggest criticism of the achievements, there aren't enough of them. The Mighty Slayer achievement basically requires you to complete the final quest and challenge of free-to-play RuneScape, but the game only gives you enough achievements for progressing through half of it, leaving the second half completely up to yourself. In my opinion, they could have put way more achievements in Steam for completing quests, fighting certain enemies, exploring, collecting money, baking cool foods, etc. You will be doing all of that anyway, so it wouldn't even have added much more time to full completion. Anyways, in the second half of the game, the main focus should be on farming your skills. I recommend getting at least 30 defense and 40 attack, so that you can equip adamant armor and a rune longsword for the eventual final fight. I farmed on the Lumbridge Swamp, fighting frogs, as they are relatively easy to kill and drop big bones which can either be sold for cash or buried for prayer xp. Along with fishing, this is what you will be doing for most of your playtime from now on. If you need money, what I recommend doing is killing imps in front of Falador South Gate and picking up the beads they occasionally drop. These sell for a good amount of gold and can be used to get yourself the gear required to take on the endgame dragon. Of course, there are probably more efficient ways to make a quicker buck laid out in the wiki, but I went with the imps as farming and requires very little effort. My next pro tip is that when you want to buy or sell something at the grand exchange quickly, just lower or increase the price with the side buttons. Now, after grinding and getting the best gear available, you should be ready for the final fight. You will have to fight several really strong enemies in that quest, so do stock up on cooked salmon, lobster, or the like. In other words, something that heals a lot. The combat of free-to-play RuneScape is largely not skill-based, so whether you win or fail will come down to how much you have farmed your skills, and how much food you will bring for regeneration. Before heading to fight the dragon, stock up your whole inventory on food. I had my skills be 40, 30, and 30 when fighting her and even that was barely enough, as I had to occasionally cheese the fight a bit by standing in a spot where she cannot attack the player in order to rest and heal. This is apparently called flinching in the community. My last pro tip is that before the final quest, you should check the settings and make it so that by left clicking a really strong enemy, your character still attacks them instead of just examining them like a fool. I do not know why this is not so by default. The final dragon boss of the game will be a lot higher in terms of levels from you, so having this setting on is essential for fighting her. Overall, the achievements are fine, and the game is really fun, but there should really be at least 10 or 20 more of them. The achievements that we have are quite well designed, but nothing to write home about. I do recommend the game for achievement hunting, especially if you have nostalgia for the game or if you want to have a fun experience for free. RuneScape is a game that everyone should experience, because of how influential it is to its genre and video games in general. Just beware of the grind that you are going to have to face, and also of how unlocking the full potential of almost any aspect of the game is locked behind paying. I will put old school RuneScape in the A tier as I enjoyed collecting the achievements, but there were some minor problems with them as well. Thank you for watching this far. Please like if you did and comment on what you thought of the video. See you later, assholes.